life was good in our valley. We had a few weeks off from between tours to just relax and do nothing but attend a Paul McCartney concert before getting back to work. When we learned Paul was bringing wings to Kansas City, we all wanted to go. When we learned Cowtown was promoting the gig, we knew we'd be able to get good seats. When we learned that Stan, our manager, might be able to arrange a backstage visit with the ex Beatle, we jumped at the chance. Kansas City's cavernous Kemper Arena is not very acoustically gifted, built more for basketball games and monster truck shows. But that night, Paul made it his living room. I packed my shirt with a handful of my hefty homegrown joints. I knew Paul also liked to smoke, and if this meeting were to come about, it would be the thrill of a lifetime to burn one with a beetle. After a wonderful evening of music, when the lights came up and people began to file out, we lagged behind. When we were summoned backstage, it was, requ it was requested that only band members come in. Grumbling rippled through the wives section, but there was nothing we could do. As we walked into the dressing room area, Stan stayed behind to unruffle spousal feathers. When John, Larry, Steve, <clears throat> Buddy, and I walked past Wing's dressing room, the place was a roar with boisterous laughter. Denny Lane and Jimmy McCullough emerged from the fray to greet us with invitations in. When we were shown into Paul's dressing room, it was a much different atmosphere. At the far end of the long room sat the McCartneys, quietly smoking a joint, towels draped over their drenched shoulders. Ah, it's the Ozark lads. Come in, come in, he cheerfully called, standing to greet us. Pretty bad English accent, wasn't it? Linda became the most gracious of hosts, making sure we all had cocktails from the massive catering table in the middle of the room. As introductions and handshakes went around, the first thing Paul did was make sure we knew that he was aware of our band, as well as our relationship with Glenn Johns. The second thing he did was ask if any of us would like to hit off his joint. I couldn't believe my lungs. I reached into my pocket and handed him one of mine, accompanied with a fatherly, try one of these, I grow it. His eyes lit up as he lit up. Conversation steered toward our shared fondness of Scotland. When we told him of our recent gigs in Glasgow and Edinburgh, he let us know that he'd heard the buzz. Then he conveyed the mutual fondness he, as well as his fellow countrymen, had for our music. Page three. When we asked uh, about recent photographs of him wearing one of our Car Over the Lake t-shirts, he candidly answered, uh, oh, I can't really remember where I got it. I just like the way it feels. He says, I wear it when I'm knocking about the house. Linda chimed in with, he wears it all the bloody time. After a brief cordial visit, it was time to leave. When I shook his hand, he thanked me for bringing the joint by. I handed him the remaining contents of my pocket with a sincere, thanks for all the bass lessons. With smiles and cheers, we left the room, reunited with our families, walked into the quiet Kansas City night, and headed home. It was time to get back to work. Paul McCartney. Thank you very much.